podcast. I guess this is the gear list I'll be taking on a 2018 through hike for the Appalachian Trail. Um, I don't have everything, but pretty much everything. I think the only thing I'm actually missing will be the bottom base layers because for some reason the merino wool bottoms I was going to get from REI were sold out when I went to buy them soon, but that won't be an issue. Um, for those that don't know, the Appalachian Trail is um, a roughly 2200 mile trail going from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Baxter State Park, Mount Katahdin in Maine, or vice versa, depending on which way you hike. Um, I'll be starting in March. The tentative date is the 12th. So hopefully, um, it'll be fairly warm. Well, not fairly warm, it just won't be bitterly cold. That's more so the hope. Um, I'll be leaving from Springer, heading north. I will have to come back, though, in May on the 15th to finish a internship class so that I can actually graduate college. Um, there's a lot of BS behind why I have to come back and such, but if you're truly interested, I can answer that in the comments or somewhere else. Um, after I come back, hopefully, depending on where I'm at on the trail at my midway departure, I will either hop back on the trail at that point, hopefully right before, right around, or a little bit after Harper's Ferry. If it's nowhere near Harper's Ferry, then I would probably turn my through hike into a flip-flop through hike, which basically means you go from one point to a certain stop, and then go up to the top, and then come down. The reason for that would be that Katahdin and the northern part of the trail gets pretty cold, snowy, etc. pretty early in the year, around like um, October, etc. And if I'm already that far behind, I want to start at the top and come down so that if I can't finish before the next semester of school starts, that I'll be able to get the sections I missed in during like fall break, Thanksgiving, and Christmas break. Because a through hike is considered hiking the entire trail within one calendar year. It doesn't have to be one continuous go. It does not have to be from point A to point B only. As long as you hike the entire 2200 miles in one calendar year, it counts as a through hike. So that is the ultimate goal. My main reasons for doing the through hike are probably that it's just something I've always wanted to do. I had a couple of friends, mainly one, that we talked about it here and there. And I had a few goals to accomplish before I hit 30, which I'm at that big old 28. I'm gonna hit the 29 mark about two to three days on the trail. But it's just a good time to get going and I'm going to take it. So I've also dealt with staggering depression from losing my parents etc and i'm sure a lot of the people that are pretty close to me have seen that and i'm hoping this is a chance to just clear my head get away from everything for a while and just do something i've always wanted to do i go over the gear i'll be taking my base weight is like a little bit between nine and a half to eleven pounds i'm sure it's going to fluctuate before i actually leave for springer mountain and there will be some stuff I'll be ditching as it warms up. I won't have the down, most likely. Or maybe I'll send back my fleece. I will hopefully not have to carry an under quilt once we actually hit summer. Um, so yeah, I will be hammock camping. But we'll go over all that. And so let's get to what I'll be taking on the trail. First things first is the bag I'll be carrying. It is an REI Flash 45. It is definitely not stock. I have cut and chopped on this bag a ton. First thing you may notice is it does not have a brain. I literally just have it as a little roll top. I'll be rolling it and then cinching it. 
have a pretty long strap if I need to attach some other stuff I'll be able to put it on the top hopefully I won't have that much that I'll be putting stuff on the top maybe a sleeping pad through the Smoky Mountains since you have to stay in the shelters there um, the bag stock weighed in around two and a half pounds but where I've cut so much, I cut the brain off. I cut the straps where the brain of the pack was. They had these little load lifter straps on the front. Didn't make much sense to me. Probably a cool selling point to other people, but cut those off. Um, I shortened straps all around the pack. I did leave the straps for trekking poles. I don't actually have trekking poles yet. I haven't decided if I'm gonna get a pair I figure by the time I hit the first outfitter on the trail which I believe off the top of my head to be um, around Blood Mountain Mills Gap not really completely for sure but it should be within the first three to five days if I feel like I need trekking poles by that point I will get them so that's why I didn't cut off the straps for those yet I probably still won't cut the trekking pole straps off right away even if I don't get them by then because it's going to take more than a week to figure out if I truly want them. Um, I've cut this pack down to about a little over a pound and a half. I'm just going to call it a pound and a half. Some purists might get mad that I'm calling it that when it's actually like closer to 1.6 pounds, but it, it's not that serious. Um, on the outside of the pack, I would definitely be carrying some sriracha. Uh, just... I love sriracha, I love hot sauce, and if I'm eating ramen and mashed potatoes pretty often, it will be nice to have something to change it up, and I'm sure some other people on the trail will appreciate a dab here and there. Um, the pack does have water bottle pockets on the side here. I'm not going to show you that I'm carrying water bottles, obviously I am. If you need to know what a smart water bottle or a life water bottle looks like, then go to your nearest gas station because I'm not going to buy water bottles two months in advance just for a video. Um, it also has this mesh pocket on the front. I mostly be carrying there my like trowel for digging poop holes, um, my rain jacket. I have my sawyer in there. It'll likely be attached to a water bottle most times. It's the Sawyer Squeeze. It just screws onto the top of water bottles, filters through. Um, it's pretty light. It's easy. It doesn't leave chemically taste. So that's what I'm going to use for now. We'll see. Maybe my opinions will change. Um, I have this little tent steak bag. I honestly forget who made it. By the time I post this video, I put a little note within the video. But we're we'll using a hammock and a tarp. It was nice to have this. Um, I've got my little tarp tree lines, ridge line, whatever you want to call them, and MSR mini groundhog stakes. Um, what else do I have in this front mess pocket? We have the Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. Weighs like six and a half ounces or something like that. Packs into itself. Pretty convenient. Um, we have the Deuce of Spades Trial. Weighs in super small. It's like 0.6 ounces. Don't know how many grams that is, but this thing literally feels like two paper clips. And it's probably way better than using a tent stake to dig a hole. So definitely went with it. A little bit pricey, but definitely recommend it. Um, I also probably have it in the front with a bag of like toilet paper, but you guys know how toilet paper looks. I'm not going to bag it up for the sake of a video. Um, so let's get into what's inside the pack. Alright, so for inside the REI Flash 45. The first thing I will probably come across actually hiking would be my food on the top. But I'm not going to pack up a food bag for the sake of this video. I'd be using a Locksack Opsack. Uh, odor-proof barrier bag inside just some kind of stuff sack it haven't decided what stuff sack it's really uh, not important um, but then we would come across a trash compactor bag uh, that'll be to keep everything on the inside dry 
It's just a trash bag, basically, that's a little bit tougher than your run-of-the-mill trash bag. It can put up with some uh, abuse here and there. I would probably take an extra one and put it all the way on the bottom of the bag, just in case the main one does rip. Um, so first things first, in the order that I will likely be packing and unpacking my bag on a pretty average basis, we will have cook kit. We'll have our canister. Uh, right now it's a Snow Peaks Giga Power, but it's honestly gonna be whatever I run into on the trail. Uh, your average canister is like four ounces. In my base weight, I do consider the weight of an empty canister. Uh, the canister does weigh more than four ounces when it has fuel in it, but the empty weight is four ounces, so that's what I'm considering it. Next, we have a Tokes 550 titanium pot with a lid, a little stuff sack. I will keep the stuff sack on it. I normally throw stuff sacks to the side, but it helps to keep the lid on and you can kind of throw a few other things in it. Um, we've got the lid. I'll be hiking in the colder months, so the lid will be kind of nice to help it boil faster and keep the heat retained. Maybe i ditch the lid as it warms up. Might even upgrade to a bigger pot because one issue I've found that it's definitely personal, but I would like to have the gas can and my stove nest inside with a lid and it's kind of an issue right now so maybe i'll upgrade to the 750 we'll see um this pot weighs about i think it was three and a half ounces somewhere in that area i have the lighter pack down in the comments or the description so you can definitely check out what it truly is and not just off the top of my head um the tokes is definitely nice it's basically a snow peaks etc it has the little marks so you know exactly how much water you're using and the marks are also on the inside i don't know if you can tell yeah you can see it in the video so that's definitely a plus um that way you're not forced to carry extra water on the trail that you don't need to or you don't waste water by like eyeballing two cups which i'm sure i get really good at um the stove i'll be using with a fuel canister is the brs you can get that off amazon for it fluctuates between like 15 to 17 dollars and it weighs like less or right at an ounce it's definitely like super compact super convenient um some people like to trash talk it about how it breaks under like certain conditions or too heavy but i have used this thing multiple times burned a lot on it cranked it up to full heat had no issues with a full two cups of water and there's tons of other videos on youtube showing that this is fine so it's most likely somebody that just wants to trash talk and is not willing to truly give it the credit it deserves um so that's pretty much it for the cook kit. I do have a mini Bic lighter and I probably cut off a piece of sponge or microfiber towel to help clean my pot between coffee and boiling water because as cool as coffee flavored ramen sounds, I don't think I'd be into it. Uh, the next thing reaching into my bag on the top would be my puffy jacket. This is a ghost whisperer. It is... 10 ounces I would like to say it packs into itself so as you can see it's packed into itself right now makes a nice pillow and a hammock or on your sleeping pad etc and then unzips pretty easily this pulls right out um, I did pick this off the backpacking gear flea market on Facebook for way less than retail but um I don't know. I think if you shop around enough and you have the time, you can definitely get some pretty good deals. I think I picked this up for close to 100 bucks, and it retails for like 220, 230. Uh, the next thing in my bag would be my ditty bag. This is gonna weigh in right around like eight to 10 ounces as of right now. Um, the bag itself is actually just the bag from uh, Big Agnes, I think it was a uh, HV Fly Creek 
UL2 and it was the footprint bag and it just turns out it's a really light bag pretty decent quality so it's now a ditty bag uh, I keep my camp socks slash extra pair of socks which are darn toughs in the bag because that's the only extra clothes that I'm carrying outside of um, the puffy jacket in my bag all my other clothes will be worn I'm not carrying any extras so uh, next inside the ditty bag will be an anchor 10,000 charger they're like 20 ish bucks on Amazon you can get them on Prime probably more than I'm gonna need but it's better to be a little bit over prepared than under it weighs in like right at 6.3 ounces so for that much power it's definitely worth it uh, next will be just your basic charging brick it's uh, just an iPhone brick you can get it or any other brick at Walmart for like whatever the next thing will be a USB short cable in my mind having the shorter cable is really nice right now maybe I want the longer one later we'll see I'm not too worried about it um, I don't know how much that weighs in and then I have the Apple iPhone short cable as well so I can throw the weights on my lighter pack here soon I then have a Fox Ellie USB rechargeable headlamp I also got that off Amazon for like 15 bucks it has like four or five modes, has the USB recharge, and it has a red light, so that's kind of nice. Um, I may switch to a um, flashlight. I haven't decided that yet. Um, next in the bag would be my tarp. There's a good chance I'm gonna carry this in the side pocket but as of right now, I do have it packed in. It is a Eno Superfly. Um, I bought this before I really had done a lot of research on tarps. So I could probably spend another hundred and get something a slight bit lighter, but it's not that serious. I did change the tarp up though, where it connects to the trees. I broke off the plastic line locks and replaced it with uh, Dutchware fleas. For just a quicker and honestly probably more secure attachment it weighs in just over a pound i think but i have to check and remember that i'm sh i haven't weighed it since i put the fleas and the dutchware gear on the tie outs and stuff so it's probably a lot lighter than that next is the hammock i'll be using um it is an eno sub six or sub seven I don't even remember what the sub is it's super light a lot of people complain that it's short but for me it works I'm like right around 510 and I have slept in this multiple nights and not had an issue I'm sure I would be more comfortable in a longer hammock but I'm comfortable in this so more comfortable versus comfortable doesn't matter if I was uncomfortable I would definitely upgrade though it's definitely worth trying out but again if you're taller a lot of people have complained that it is not a comfortable night's sleep for connecting the hammock to the trees I I'm gonna sound like an Eno fan boy here but I have the helio straps they have been great they use a whoopee sling type suspension so you connect this part to the carabiner of the hammock and when you connect your part here around the tree the way you actually adjust it is by sliding the whoopee sling through so it's definitely super adjustable super lightweight I think all in all the hammock with the straps weighs in just under um, 10 ounces so for my under quilt which hopefully I can ditch when it warms up but we'll see um, with I mean, I probably will ditch it. I'll probably use a sleeping pad through the Smokies and send back the under quilt. And if I end up hammock camping through the Smokies, I'll just use the sleeping pad in the quilt. Um, but I have the Enlightened Equipments. I think it's the Apex Revolt. It's a synthetic under quilt. Um, I don't know if you can see this whole thing in the video not that you really need to but it is a 20 degree 
apex undercoil. It goes underneath the hammock so that when the wind blows, I don't get um, cold butt syndrome. And I think it weighs in right around 19, 21 ounces, something like that, just over a pound. It is synthetic. Um, by the time I leave for the trail, I may have upgraded to a down under quilt, which won't really improve the warmth. It'll just be more packable. The weight will honestly probably be very similar as well, but packability is nice. It'll pack down smaller if it's down versus the synthetic, which does not compress as much. Um, for a top quilt, I'll be using the Hammock Gear Econ Burrow. Um, I picked this up on Black Friday. Definitely worth the money. Um, in case you don't know what a quilt is, it is basically a sleeping bag that doesn't have the back part. Like, you don't crawl inside of it. You think about the word quilt, and that's pretty much what it is. It's something you throw over top of you. Uh, it does have a foot box, which means right around the bottom, they take it. <coughs> and I mean, I'm going to show you guys, but they put snaps on it so that your feet are still enclosed so you have some warmth there and it doesn't slot all over the top of you and then so instead of doing every single set i'm just going to go to the very top set of snaps so i would snap those together and then you have your foot box see like how it's open here all the way to the top that'll be at your head but you have a foot box here and you can leave it open if you're like one of those people that stick your foot out of the blanket when you sleep because you need that one foot to be cold just to be comfortable. Um, or you can take this drawstring and just drawstring it shut and then it's like a sleeping bag closed in. This comes in right at about 23 ounces since it's the Econ. It uses duck down instead of goose down which does weigh a little bit more and I think they use a little bit heavier um, fabric on it. But that will mainly be everything I'm carrying for the Appalachian Trail. Uh, some things might change here or there. I will have some leggings. They'll be most likely REI merino wool bottom base layers. But again, I think I said in the earlier video they were sold out. So I don't have those pictured. For a beanie, I plan on using the Outdoor Research Camber 2 beanie. It was like... 12 bucks on clearance at REI the last time I was there, so I just picked it up. It is a uh, synthetic insulated. It's a little fancy, probably overkill. Might end up just switching to a normal fleece beanie. Um, I'll also be wearing, not taking any underwear. I'll be wearing some Brooks running shorts for the beginning of the trail, or as long as they last. They have the little liner inside. They have a little pocket back here you can put like a snack bar, some money, whatever in. They're definitely super short, but I enjoy them. Uh, like I said with the Moreno wool bottom base layer, I'll also be having the matching REI Moreno wool top base layer. It's super comfortable. Uh, I feel like it'll be a lot nicer than a synthetic base layer. It's a lot softer, will probably feel better when it is wet at times. Uh, I don't know the weight because I'm going to be wearing it, so I don't care what it weighs. Probably something close to like 10 ounces. Um, I wanted to get, I think it's a Melizana fleece, but they stopped selling online right before I went to order. Like literally three days before I went to order, they stopped selling. So good for them. They're expanding and they had too many people wanting to order them. That they just couldn't keep up. But sucks for me and everyone else who wanted one. But I ended up snagging a Patagonia R1 fleece microgrid off REI during Black Friday, I think it was, for like a hundred bucks. And then I was also able to use a coupon. So I picked this up for like $90 to a hundred bucks, somewhere in that range. I really don't remember the exact way the transaction worked out. I just know that I picked this up for almost half off. And so far it's been great. Uh, I'd be hiking in Darn Tufts. I mean, people rant and rave about them. I've been wearing them 
to school and work for like the last month and they have not treated me wrong but twenty dollars for a pair of socks is the most i've ever paid so hopefully they live up to the hype on the trail um beginning the trail i will be in some adidas galaxy trail runners super cheap probably super crappy in comparison to other trail runners i plan on replacing the footbeds i have a significant arch in my foot and i want to be as comfortable as possible on the trail so that's something that's not included right now in this video or in my shoe but will be coming is some footbeds and if i do upgrade the footbeds i will definitely make a video about the process of that because i feel like that can be very important i feel like a lot of times i've read the main reasons for getting off the trail are spending all your money too fast injuries and pain so pain normally comes from too much weight on your back and inadequate footwear and hopefully i can beat all three of those um again like i said if you have any questions about what i'm carrying how i'm going to do this or anything else feel free to leave a comment and i will make a q a or answer your question in the comments if it's simple enough um March 12th start date. We'll see what happens. Thanks.